Welcome to JLive. I'm Laura Mandel, JArts Executive Director, and it's great to be with you for JLive, our JArts virtual series of bite sized conversations about Jewish life and art with the best artists with Boston connections. Today is a bit of a departure from our usual JLive format because I'm actually with a team behind the brighter revealed JArts Hanukkah mobile public art installation, Tova Speeder and Emily Bargov. Welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. So we're not talking about this brighter revealed piece just because it's a J Arts commission, although it is. Um, we're actually talking about this concept because this is a mobile Hanukkah art installation that was built and intended to share the light of Hanukkah with communities across greater Boston, something that I am so passionate about personally, but I think generally something we can all feel really proud of. Um, and so we want a chance to talk a little bit more about this project in detail. So of course, as always, if you have questions during our conversation, put them in the chat um, at the bottom of your Zoom screen and we'll ask as many as time allows. So Tova and Emily, before we launch into the magic and magnificence that is uh, Brighter Revealed, will you tell us a little bit about each of you and why are you are so uniquely suited to do this work? Um, and Emily, why don't you kick us off by telling us a little bit about some of your experiences doing community-based art? Sure. Thanks for having us. Um, so I have my own studio where I do a variety of stained glass and mosaic projects. Um, but I also for decades now have been leading collaborative community art projects. Um, I work part time at a place called the Beautiful Stuff Project, which is a creative reuse center in Somerville, Mass. And um, through that work, I have the opportunity to do arts integration projects with schools across Somerville and sometimes beyond. Mm -hmm. I lead collaborative com uh, mosaic projects like a series of mosaic story walks that we've created during COVID mm -hmm. as a way to get families out with a safe COVID safe destination to um, increase literacy and just appreciation of stories and learning. Um, and I've always loved the fact that by bringing people together to work on a piece of art, they create long lasting partnerships and bonds with each other that can be used for other things in the future. So my own work is right at the intersection of health and art. And I truly believe that um, the collaborative art projects that we're able to lead um, can strengthen a community, can help people feel ownership of where they are and where their art is being seen and can help to make a community healthier overall. That's so beautiful. And I love the connection between art and health, because as you just said, that's so significant. And I think we overlook that a lot. Um, so Tova, you, you similarly come from this background of art therapy and, so tell us about how you came to be so passionate about community art making and, and art as a tool for health and, and all these wonderful things. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me. And I, I just, I have worked at this intersection of art and community and Jewish experience for, for over 20 years now, and have really enjoyed um, bringing all of these different aspects of who I am to the work. So as an art therapist, I often engage people in utilizing the arts in the therapeutic process and using art as a tool for connection with yourself, um, but also with others. Um, and as a community muralist, I go into communities and help bring out the voices and messages that a community wants to share and empower people to really um, be, the, be the ones to, um, to design and to paint and to feel empowered in the work they create. And it's just, it, it goes through all of the work that I do. Um, and it's, you know, I've, I've described my work before as being a success when people almost forget that I was there and just, you know, <laughs> realize, look at the art that I made, not look at the art that this artist, you know, helped me make. And so I really want to help offer those experiences for people to help them recognize that they are artists too, even though they don't realize it yet. Um, there's always different ways that we can engage with each other and, um, and bring out our creative spirit. 
I love how you just said that and how your focus when we do projects together across many years is always, it's not about me as the artist, it's about the community. And I think that's something that's so special about both of you is that unto your own rights, you're incredibly talented and accomplished artists, but you also have this incredible skill for bringing community together and for collaborating. Um, and to me, that's sort of the core essence of what's so beautiful about Brighter Revealed. So, um, you know, and I should note that the, the sounds you heard, the voices you heard at the beginning of this program are actually a core part of Brighter Revealed. Um, and that is a collaborative piece of this, that you both engaged 75 of the 300 plus participants in this project to speak about their own source of inner strength. Um, you engaged Manny Hutter, who is a high school senior at Newton North, who created this piece with you. And like we said, over 300 participants, which I just think is phenomenal. So with all of that in mind, Emily, will you tell us about Brighter Revealed. What are we talking about today? Absolutely. Writer Revealed is a huge lantern that is big enough for people to step inside and you can see it on the photo. Um, it's built on a trailer that can be pulled behind a truck and the window designs that you can see are um, are pieces of art that were made, as, as you said, Laura, by more than 300 community members of all ages. So um, during the daytime, when the lantern is being shown, um, participants and, and um, people who are coming to see it can walk inside and experience it from the inside. The art made by the community looks like stained glass with colored light coming through the designs. When it's viewed in the evening, it's lit from within and it glows so that you can walk around the lantern and see all of the art and um, explore it from the outside. It's stunning. And we, it's we ab built absolutely it. stunning. Sorry, I was just gonna say that we built it um, with a lot of um, nods to Hanukkah. So it is very intentionally um, a light that shines during the darkest, coldest time of the year. It has eight sides to represent the eight nights of Hanukkah. And if you look at the designs on the top and the ceiling of the piece, um, they they look like the eight flames that you might see on Hanukkah. Awesome. All right, so Tova, this is not a, a first time project for us in this way. Um, this piece is actually the evolution of what some of you out there might re recall as our sort of whole brighter series that we started together with Tova and Jay Arts four years ago. Can you tell us about this series, where it started, how it's evolved, and how we got to this incredible piece? Yeah, of course. So uh, I've been involved in the MFA celebration with Jai Art since its inception. And it started with me just leading art workshops um, at the museum for the hundreds of people who came through. And then in a visioning conversation with Jai Arts about how we can engage community even, you know, in, in even more meaningful art making, um, I was very honored to be commissioned to create Brighter Together, which you can see there on the left in 2018. And that was a collaboration with eight partners. I engaged four Jewish, uh, Jewish schools and four public school groups to create all these different pieces to tie the ribbons on the eight um, columns and to create the artwork um, that would be revealed um, in the black light. So they used invisible ink pens and did different things to, um, to really add a lot of meaning and create this interactive glowing installation where the brightness actually grew over the course of the evening as more people engaged and added their own light into, into the installation. So that was back in 2018. It was a big success. So then we went to Brighter Beyond. And so if Brighter Together was about all of our light coming together to be, you know, to shine, Brighter Beyond was what do we do when we have all that light together and, and, and then beyond that, like send it, sending it out into the world. So again, partnering with eight groups was amazing and to have this, um, you know, amazing uh, glowing experience in the museum. So then what happened is 2020 happened and, you know, unfortunately with pandemic restrictions, we were no longer able to gather in the museum. And so we were brainstorming, how can we still bring the light to the community? And if 
people can't come to the art, how do we bring the art right to the community? And so, um, so I helped devise uh, Brighter Connected, which was a series of eight window displays partnering with eight different artists. Um, Emily and myself were two of those eight artists. Um, and so this installation that you see there was um, in the Newton Center window that was an abandoned storefront at the time um, due to the pandemic. Um, but we utilized it and we filled that empty space with the light of um, works from, again, eight different, this time it was eight Jewish schools, um, over 200 students collaborated with me over Zoom to create these cards that then were mailed out to the community um, to share light with them as well. So it's, um, it's developed over time, but at the essence of everything is, you know, these themes of Hanukkah and light and connecting each other together. Well, and I think you ended on a perfect note because the, the notion of connecting people is really where this does all come from. So Emily, will you talk to us um, a little bit about the process of community engagement for this and, and how that connected people? Mm -hmm. For this project, we, we worked with eight different Jewish day schools and eight other community organizations. And in each of those 16 places, Tova or I or both, um, showed up with a box of materials and led the group through a workshop to create pieces of art um, that you see in those windows. So we always began our conversation with a discussion of um, Omet's Lev, which is courage of the heart and how that concept is connected to Hanukkah and connected to um, our ability to make change in the world around us. Um, we, we prompted each of the participants to think about what it is that brings them strength and helps them to be a better person. And um, they each made a, a very small four by four canvas painting using watercolor pencils um, about their sources of strength. As those dried, they were each given a piece of transparent scratch art. So um, they could scratch away a design and see what was behind. Um, and we also had eight designs that you can see some of them on the left and you can see them in all of the pictures of the finished lantern. Um, each of the eight symbols represents a different source of strength. So as we led people through the conversations about their own sources of strength, we helped them to choose one of these symbols to represent the, the key, the key thing that brings them their strength. Um, we had friends, we had knowledge, family, music, nature. Those are just a few of them. And um, once, once they'd chosen a stencil, each person scratched away the shape of that stencil on top of their painted image. And as they scratched away, they revealed the colors and the shapes underneath. Um, they added their own designs in the background. You can see as you look at the photo that um, every piece is different, even though they had the same set of eight symbols to choose from. Um, we wanted each person to give the piece their unique touch. And our hope was that by the end of the workshop and also in the finished piece, um, people would be able to see that there are many similarities between us in terms of what we draw strength from and the things that support us um, and that each of us is unique in the way that we think in what we draw strength from. So we took with us the scratch art to add to the larger lantern and they kept their paintings. Beautiful. And I just have to say, I felt so lucky to join you, Emily, at um, Coleman House to sit with a bunch of senior residents there. Um, and just what a cool experience to hear a number of the, the participants say, I'm not an art person, I'm not an artist. And by the end of it, they had had such a meaningful hour. I mean, I totally lost myself. You know, I was just coming as a participant and I just, I really enjoyed it. And it was also just so um, inspiring to see people all connect in their own way. And then when you hear the voices that we heard up at the top of this program, to hear the different ways that people interpreted this in such meaningful and deep and moving ways. I think in a moment of COVID where people have been so isolated and so disconnected that you really through this did make space for people to talk and discuss and to actually have a very emotional experience. So um, I just have to applaud both of you for making making that space because it's I know it's difficult to do um, and you really did a beautiful job with it. Thanks. So yeah. 
Um, so Tova, tell us more about the experience of the actual piece. When I am in this, like, tell us what that feels like. Great. Um, and actually, just before I, before I do that, I want to piggyback on something that Emily said um, in terms of the workshops and the, and the experience of them. And, you know, with the, the previous iterations of the Brighter series, I worked mainly with students. And it was really important this year that we try to broaden that that opportunity for people um, to work with the older adults, to work with um, you know, people with disabilities, to pe work with people in recovery from substance addiction. I mean, the, we ended up being able to work with 16 groups instead of just 18, or I'm sorry, instead of just eight, because Emily joined me. So before <laughs> I was doing this on my own, but thankfully we have, um, you know, now with both of us, we were able to expand the capacity and to, and to develop this as something even greater. Um, and it was so important to be able to bring the work to the people, um, not just in windows, but literally out their door. So that's why we built it um, as a traveling installation. Um, but with that, you know, the idea is that this can be experienced um, in a couple of different ways. And Emily mentioned it a little bit earlier, but it's, it's all about revealing the inner strength that we each have that helps us stand up for what we believe in despite all odds against us. So it's very universal though it, it stems from the Hanukkah story. And in the daytime, you know, people li literally step inside the lantern and the light comes from outside. And so it's this outside source of light that helps illuminate what we have within and you can be surrounded by the voices and the imagery. When it goes somewhere at night after four o'clock in, in, in the winter now, um, you know, they, they don't go inside, but it's illuminated from within. There's a there's actually a um, an, a little shamash like situation on the inside to to light it up and illuminate it. And so in that case, what's being revealed, you know, that inner strength is revealed and illuminated from within. So these are two different ways that we can think about um, how our own inner strength comes out. Sometimes it you know it comes out from within. And sometimes it takes something from outside to help draw it out and and illuminate it. So the inner the you know. The spirit of inner strength is constant, um, no matter what. But we're really hopeful that you know as many people as possible can experience it, both those who participated, and they can find their own piece that they made. They can notice similarities and differences, but that anybody who sees it can maybe be inspired to help recognize their own source of inner strength when they go and um, and maybe you know utilize that and let it continue to strengthen them in the days to come. Beautiful. Um, and I have one other note that I, I want to throw in, which is simply, as I noted up at the top, this has been such a collaborative project. I would love to give you a moment to give a shout out to some of the people who have been so critical to this. Manny Hutter and Peter Similian and the partners at Lamb Partners. Tell us, Tova, a little bit about who those people are and what they did to help you create this. Sure. So Emily and I visioned, you know, this out, but Manny Hutter um, was our structural carpenter um, and he physically built the trailer and the, you know, the wooden structure of the piece. Um, and it's amazing to work with such a talented student. He is 18 years old and just beyond, um, beyond amazing. Um, and so, so he was really critical in, in the whole thing. On the other side, Peter um, has been our exhibit guide. So he's right now, he's driving <laughs> along somewhere with that giant trailer, um, bringing it to, to different communities. And so he's been um, the one to bring it to, bring it to different people and to explain um, you know, the whole process and, and give meaning behind it. Um, in addition, the audio that you heard earlier and that goes along with the, with the trailer um, was put together by Jesse Ulrich and um, the music even behind that was Neil Katz. And so there's so many different people who have touched this um, that it feels like it really is capturing the spirit of Hanukkah and that collaborative nature. Awesome. So much talent has gone into this. Um, and to that end, this piece is so popular that we actually had to extend its life. The original intent was to tour it for the eight days and nights of Hanukkah. Um, but we now have community partners who are so excited to have it that we're gonna be going for a few extra days. Um, so Emily, I'm kind of curious to know from your perspective, what has either surprised or excited you most in experiencing the final piece that you didn't necessarily expect during the workshops? 
I, um, I've been thrilled to see each person step inside and I have not been able to be at any of the formal um, events yet. So um, it's only been during our construction process that, that I was able to see this happen. But as people would come by and step inside, I just heard them give a little gasp. And I think that um, in that way, it wasn't necessarily a surprise, but I was thrilled to see that it had worked to have the emotional impact on um, visitors and viewers that, that we were hoping for it to have. Um, because it's one thing to talk about um, strength and community, but it's another to feel it and see it. And I think the piece has really succeeded in helping people understand the scale of the partnerships and the collaborations that made this happen and the fact that there really are meaningful connections between all of us. So I, I've really loved that. Um, and I wanted to add, Laura, that in addition to the formal calendar of events that, that's been posted of where this will be, it will also be included in the um, Somerville Community Lantern Project on December 11th. So if anybody misses the, the earlier dates and wants to see it there, you can do that. That's so exciting. And I have to admit, I, I feel terrible. I also haven't been inside of it yet because I'm doing the second half of the holiday. Um, I am so excited to go see it in Brookline tonight for anybody who's around out in front of the um, 384 Harvard Street Campus Pahilat Israel building. Um, we'll be out there for a couple of hours um, and it's going to be all around town this weekend. So there is a map in the chat for anybody who's, who's interested to find out where it will be going next. Um, and I also just wanna relate to both of you that there's an incredible number of compliments to both of you in the chat right now. Um, people are so excited by what you've created, the collaborations, um, it's, it's pretty incredible. So I just wanna say the biggest possible thank you to both of you for being such visionaries and for really just making this happen. I mean, everyone out there should know that most people don't have it in them to come up with a vision of this scale and to execute it the way the both of you have. So I just wanna say a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, can I, I can I add one thing, Laura? Yeah, please. I just wanna, I just wanna <laughs> say thank you back to Jay Arts because when we were thinking about what this next iteration could be during the pandemic and still not in the museum, it was this crazy idea that just came up of like, oh, I wonder if we could build it on a trailer. And most people would say, okay, that's too crazy and move on. But you actually sat with us with that and said, well, what would that look like? And I just, you know, gratitude out to Jay Arts for recognizing and believing in something that's never been done before and just being along and supportive with the journey to make it happen. As we I now know. That. The crazier the idea, the better the outcome. So <laughs> we're, we're a good team. Thank you both. Um, and for all of you out there, please know that none of this work is possible without generous community support from people like you. You should all know we did not charge a penny to any of the partners involved in this. Um, and it was all made possible by, by philanthropy and, and donors. So I just want to make a plug that if anybody is inspired by this project, I do hope you'll make a gift to Jay Arts um, to help support future iterations of projects like this, because there will be more. So thank you all for being with us today. Um, I hope you'll check out the, the rest of the week with Brighter Revealed and um, happy, happy Hanukkah to everyone. See you all soon. <laughs>